on with the test set. First, I want to start and say that the Black Panther Party started community health care in the yes. 70s. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from. <laughs> um, but I also want to talk about these chronic conditions. Can you go back to my cover, though? So what I want to talk about is something a little bit different. I want to be specific. because I'm here to talk about black people and their health and what makes us sick, right? We spend a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money in healthcare. And I wanna to suggest to you that we may be looking at the wrong solutions, or we may be looking for the wrong processes when we talk about what actually makes people well, and in this particular case, I'm talking about black people. So I wanna talk about racism and gentrification being a public health crisis. And I wanted, so I set myself up to be after Dr. Colfax because he was supposed to talk about all the academics and data. And I was gonna talk about feelings. So um, just to go quickly over social determinants of health, we know basically pretty much, we know that the, the, our environment where we live determines how, we're, how healthy we are, right? Good neighborhoods, those neighborhoods we say are good, they have good schools, they have you know, good food, access to food, access to health care, safe housing. They have all of these things that make people healthy. But <laughs> when, we, I wanna, when we talk about social determinants of health in poor black communities, can you go back one time? We, we deal with, the, the major thing I want to focus on is gentrification, but we also deal with underperforming schools, not just in Marin City, which I'm here to represent today, but in black communities, poor black communities throughout the country. We deal with unequal education, schools that are, uh, don't have the appropriate resources. We deal with unsafe housing in many cases. Um, you know, public housing developments usually go in poor communities, particularly black communities. We deal with, um, you know, our parks aren't as great. Our, out, our outdoor space aren't as, isn't as great. But we also have really dysfunctional examples of relationships and we don't build strong partnerships. Um, we have a lack of business front in our communities today. Um, and you know, we have environmental injustices that happen. We're usually in very unclean communities when we look at um, super fun sites and hot spots in our community. And we also have our healthcare, our access to healthcare is very different. So that, you know, there's a very, very different picture of health based on where we live. Okay. So what I want to suggest is that this has to do with the fact that our people have had to play defense since we arrived here. Some, a woman that I love, her name is Ava, um, once said that since we've arrived in the United States, we've always had to play defense, but offense wins games. So I wanna go back and focus on um, the idea that stress makes us sick. And after I do this presentation, I wanna ask again, what do you think we should do with this stress? Can we go home and just take a break? You know, can we go home and take a bath? Can we rub our head? Like, how do we get rid of the stress? And is the answer to give us some medicine and put us in meditation classes? Like, how do we deal with the problem that black people are at the bottom of, of health outcomes across the board? How, it, it couldn't be that we need medicine and, and a, a life coach. It couldn't be, or we'd be well. So can you go to the next slide? I want the most important thing that slavery took from us, and if you're African American, uniquely, we, we were brought here through slavery, our ancestors. The most important thing that slavery took from us was identity. And identity, the loss of identity is directly related to mental and physical health. Right, we, we came over here and we were stripped of any, anything we were or anything we knew. Okay. So going back to that, that comment always on the defense. Um, I'm gonna take you guys through a timeline and for some odd reason my timeline went away. <laughs> it was very pretty. Um, black folks came over, we all, we all have heard and know this, we came over in slavery. And then in 1865, the, the, in, the Civil War ended and we were free. But as soon as we were free, that same time, the black codes were enforced. And so black codes were codes that limited whatever we could do. And then we kind of re remixed it. On the defense, we, we got together as a community and said, this is how we're going to overcome that. And then right after that, the KKK was formed. And they terrorized us, literally. And we got together and we figured out how to be in community and to get past that. And once we got to that point, there was something called convict leasing. 
And that's where somebody could see you on the street and say you committed a crime without the proof. And then you go back into slavery, often working in uh, mines and other dangerous industries, but you'd have to serve your time as, as kind of a slave again, right? So it's slavery by another name, convict leasing. Then we still overcame that and then there was Jim Crow. And Jim Crow was not a long time ago. Our children are always taught in school that that was a really long time ago, but it wasn't. It was just yesterday when we would be killed to read. Just yesterday. But somehow we survived Jim Crow. And through this time period, I wanna point out that we still had Rosewood. And we still had Black Wall Street. Who in here knows what Black Wall Street was? If you do, please just raise your hand. Everyone else look around. Please keep your hand up. Black Wall Street was a community in Oklahoma that black people created for themselves that had one of the strongest business districts ever. There was a very strong sense of community and people belonged there. So that you know, it was bombed by white people. So when we say this horrible tragedy in Las Vegas was awful, thousands of people died in Black Wall Street only because they were doing well and racism caused white people to drop bombs in the United States on black people. But we got over it on the defense, got together and still created community. The Civil Rights Movement came there. During the Civil Rights Movement, there was something called the COINTELPRO. I don't know if you know that. But it's an FBI program that was designed to infiltrate all of our movements and destroy them, an FBI program. But when we look back, Everything I've talked about was sanctioned by the U.S. government. Everything. Can you move forward? So, in the Civil Rights Movement, we still kept it together. Even through the interference of the COINTELPRO uh, Pro movement, which destroyed the Black Panther Party and murdered our leaders, which destroyed uh, other groups like the Black Panther Party, we still, we created Marin City. Marin City, by the way, was a place that black people could not leave while other people could leave. But we did something with it, right? We had Fillmore, we had community, because community was important. In the 80s, after we got over the COINTELPRO, crack cocaine came, and we're gonna go back to that. We're not gonna deal with that now. But I wanna point out that crack cocaine came, and ever since then, we've been trying to regroup. It destroyed us. Even though crack cocaine came and, and had an effect on us, we still today are dealing with the prison industrial system. We're dealing with unjust sentencing. We're dealing with food desert today. Because we don't want to only say yesterday, but we have to paint the picture so that you can know what a person that presents to Matesha's clinic might be dealing with. And they might show up with hypertension. But is the answer to give them medicine? Will that really make them well? If you go, I'll go really fast. Um, oh, good. Okay, so I'm gonna say that, um, why was community so important for us? Because the first thing was safety. We had to be together to be safe because we were being terrorized by groups that were out to destroy us. So in our communities, we, we built cultures from nothing. Remember, because our identity was taken. So we, we had to create anything we know. Anything we do here that's separate from white folks, we had to create it from nothing. So where do we do that in our community? We had to learn survival skills. Because even today, we go home and have to have discussions on how to survive white folks. How do our children live? How do we do this? How do we, we have those conversations today. Um, cooperative economics, we had that in our community. I just told you of a community that was bombed because it was so successful, but that was just one. Um, and, and, and education. People like to think that we can't learn or don't want to learn. Coming out of Jim Crow, we had some of the most educated people there were. Education was always important to us. But then came crack cocaine. Crack cocaine was introduced by the CIA. The CIA. After, when crack came, it destroyed, it, I, I said last week, I'm 45 years old. Until I was seven, I remember a life without crack. I lived in Fillmore where my entire family lived. And I, and I didn't know of crack. When, after seven, everything changed. 
right? Everything changed. Nothing for us was the same. We're still recovering from that now. But what that tells me is if you're younger than me, if you're 30, you don't even know us before crack cocaine. You don't even know what we accomplished. You don't even know we had strong families. We have children and young people now who only know the product of crack cocaine, which almost made Frankensteins. It destroyed our family. My mother was a crack addict. She has eight years clean now. It destroyed, I don't know a person in the black community that hasn't been affected by crack, but the devastation was very specific. It had, uh, it destroyed our family structure. Our children were removed. They were taken out of the community. Just read the slide, because it makes my blood pressure high. So I asked someone in Marin City what their life was like. What was Marin, I'm not from Marin City. So I said, what was Marin City like before crack? And what was it like post crack? And that, those are some things that they said. You could just move forward if I hope you can read them. So uh, what happens when our communities are be, being gentrified? I said all of that to let you know that we're together by design. There are certain things and safeties that we created for each other by design. And when that is broken by this weaponized word called diversity that works for everyone else but not really black folks, when that's broken, then we, and, and other people come in our community, and I'm gonna be specific today and just talk about white gentrification. We have to change, and I wanna finish this thought. Um, most recently, I heard about Lake Merritt in Oakland, which was a black community. All in the Bay Area, black communities are being gentrified. But they drum on the weekend, because black people are connected to drums. One of the things we know about ourselves. But the community now, a lot of white folks moved in, and they don't like the drumming. So they went to the city council and complained about it, and now there's a noise ordinance. So black people in their community can't drum anymore. That's just one example. It happens to us all the time. So then because we lack resources and power, we have no power to stop the change that comes that breaks the little piece that we've gotten, especially in the rebuild trying to, to overcome crack cocaine. Then we're swayed by all your ideas. I'm not saying they're not black feminists, I'm just saying feminism is not an idea that came from us. I'm just saying we have to do things that other people do to survive, and it makes us sick. How does that present? Can you go? Right. Thank you. Mental health, depression, anxiety, disassociation, because how do I survive this? Like, should I be the black person that acts like I'm not with those black people? Or should I be the one that's super educated because I know the smarter that I get, I'm connected to white folks, which is connected to resources? What kind of black person should I show up as? Does it, is my name gonna affect me? Is my clothing gonna affect me? What's gonna affect me? Because black people have to consider white people every day in every decision if they wanna be successful, which is a mental health issue. It also presents as hypertension, diabetes, obesity, all the hormone of trying to survive this and now being displaced and I gotta live in Antioch. I'm not from Antioch. I don't know people. My church isn't in Antioch. Like, but I can't live where I was born, the place I'm attached to. I'm going really fast. <laughs> so I wanna prove this. I wanna prove what I'm saying. I'm a midwife. In the United States, black women are among those with the worst outcomes for the baby and the mama. We die during childbirth. Research has shown that the reason that our babies come too early, or one of the reasons our babies come too early or they weigh too little is because of the effect of stress and racism. But when an African woman comes here from Africa, she has the same exact outcome as a white woman. But if she stays here one generation, her outcomes, her, they start to get in line with the African-American woman because she's now had to be black in the United States of America. A shift that quick, the same thing is happening for brown women. Okay, okay. 